Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week we are gonna be at the sewing machine and I'm so excited to show you this tutorial. This particular item I have seen at so many craft shows and I keep getting pop-ups on like Facebook um, and different social media channels that you can buy a template to make these. And what I'm really excited to show you today is how you can make them without buying a template. What am I talking about? I'm talking about bowl cozies. And these have been so fun to make. And what I'm gonna show you today is how to make them so they're reversible. And I just think that is such a great idea. So I received one of these quite a few years ago um, as a Christmas gift and we use it, especially if I'm doing soup, it is just perfect to put a soup bowl in. But you can also put these directly into the microwave, which is really nice if you use the right materials. So I will go over all of that in the tutorial and show you exactly what you need to make sure that they're safe to use in the microwave. So before we get to the tutorial today though, I've got to thank you for stopping by my channel. I so appreciate it each time you stop by. And hey, if you're new to my channel and you like this tutorial, make sure that you subscribe, even like it, which would be great. And then of course, click on the notification button and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. So give me a second, I'm gonna get my camera angle changer. I'm gonna meet you right over here at my pressing cutting station, and we're gonna get going on this project to show you how to make these great reversible bowl cozies. So let's get started on this project and I can't wait to show you how easy these are to make. I have seen these at so many craft fairs and I had just not gone on the bandwagon to make them. And I've also seen lots of people that are selling templates out there and I wanna show you how easy it is to do without having to purchase a template to make these reversible um, bowl cozies. So what do we need to get started? So the very first thing I want to recommend that you guys do is make sure that you are using 100% cotton material. And you are also going to want to use 100% cotton thread and 100% cotton batting. And so each piece is gonna have batting in there too. And the reason why I'm recommending that you use the 100% cotton all the way around is if you want to put these in the microwave, um, polyester can catch fire. And so just really make sure you're taking the time to look at that you've got 100% um, cotton material, thread, and the batting. So what else do we need? We are going to be using the material, like I said, we're gonna be using the batting and we're gonna be using the thread. I also find very handy to use my cutting mat. Now I just invested in one of these cutting mats that turns, it's on a, like a Lazy Susan, and boy is it fun to use. So I would recommend that you are using some type of cutting mat some type of ruler you definitely want to use. And then you're going to want a rotary blade and a few pins. And other than that, that's what we need to get this project done. Oh, one more thing. You want to use a marking pen. And so you don't necessarily have to use a disappearing ink pen. I'm going to be because um, all the marking we're going to be doing is on the inside of the fabric. So I'm having so much fun making these and going through my stash today, getting ready for this video, I found this fun material that I used to make some hot pads for our trailer. And I had leftovers, so I thought, why don't I make bowl cozies for our trailer? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these, but today we're just gonna make one of them. So let me show you how we start this process. So you are going to cut out 
10 by 10 um, pieces of 100% cotton fabric. Now I like to use it where I've got one fabric on the outside and one on the inside. And then again, it can be reversible. So that's why I've got two different types of fabrics here, two different patterns. The other thing you're gonna do is you are gonna cut two nine and a half by nine and a half inch squares of batting. Again, it's 100% cotton batting. So that's what we're gonna cut out. So two of the cotton fabric and two of the cotton batting. Then the next step you're gonna do is you are gonna take your first piece of um, fabric and you're gonna lay it face down. So, so wrong side up. You are going to take your batting and you are going to center it and lay it as best you can right on there. It should be a little bit smaller if you cut it just right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw some lines. Now this is what's gonna take the place of you using a template um, or um, a pattern piece. We're gonna create our own. So we are going to draw a diagonal line. Now my diagonal lines that I'm drawing are going to be what I call my quilting lines. And my pen is definitely not gonna cooperate with me. So let me grab another one. And so I'm gonna draw my diagonal lines. And like I said, this is what I'm gonna use for my quilting. I can see that I don't quite have this laid straight, so I wanna make sure I get it laid nice and straight. So my diagonal lines, we are going to take over the sewing machine and we're gonna sew on these. The next lines you're gonna do is you are going to do what I call a, a cross. Okay, so we're gonna go that way and then we're gonna go this way. So you've got an arrangement of lines here. So these two, these lines are what we're gonna use to um, lay out where our darts are gonna be. And when I say darts, darts are what is going to form where your bowl fits in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ruler and we are gonna measure one inch on either side of that, what I call the cross line. So one inch on either side. And so I'm just gonna do that. And then we are going to do a connecting line two inches down. So now I'm gonna go two inches down and oops, two inches down all the way around. And I like to do my lines all at once. You could have sewn your crisscross if you wanted to first, but I just like to get this all done. Then what I'm gonna do is we are gonna connect the dots. And I am going to just do my lines. Now these are gonna turn into my sewing lines for the darts. So if you were making a bunch of these, you could get all your lines drawn, um, and then just do a lot of sewing at the sewing machine all at once. So now that I've got that done, what my next step to do is to go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew down this diagonal line and this diagonal line. And just for the sake of time, I've already done that. And so you can see, if you look real close, you can see I've got a diagonal line and a diagonal line. So that one is ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some pins. Now I am a big clip person, but for this step, you're gonna wanna use pins. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold on that line. And we're gonna make sure we're nice and straight and we're gonna put a pin in. And I'm gonna do that on each one of these. So I'm just gonna pin right here. So all four of them. So we're creating four darts when we're doing this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew on that line we created. 
So we are going to go to the sewing machine and we are going to sew a line right along there and we're going to secure our stitch and we're going to secure it at the end and we're going to go all the way around. So let's pop over to the sewing machine and we will do that. So we're at the sewing machine and I've got everything pinned and I've got my guidelines. So I'm going to make sure again that I'm lined up nice and straight at the top. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the sewing machine and I am going to start my stitch. I'm going to do a little back stitch, pull my pin out, and then I'm just going to go all the way down to the corner and then I am going to back stitch again. So let me just show you that close up so you can see exactly what I did. And so see how I have that stitch? And if we look on the inside, I've created a little dart there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four of these, or I've got three left. So we've got our darts all done and if you see it creates this cute little pocket for where our bowl is going to go so what i want to do now is i like to open up my darts i just feel like it makes my um, bowl lay a little bit nicer so i'm just going to use my scissors and i'm not clipping all the way to the end almost to the end so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up each one of those. And you guys will notice that I went ahead and did the contrasting color also. So I've got two all ready to go. And for my next step, I definitely need both of them. So let's go ahead and just get these all opened up. I've also got my iron here all heated up, ready to go. So I'm just gonna clip a little bit of threads here. I always like cut my threads as I go. Some people would say you don't need to worry about the inside ones because no one's going to see them, but Lisa still likes to clip her threads. So let's go ahead and get those all clipped. And then what we're going to do is we are going to hook these together. First, what I like to do is just go ahead and give that seam just a quick little press where we opened up the dart and that way this is your one opportunity to really iron that and give it a nice press so just like to do that so i'll do that all the way around and then we are going to match these together and hook them together the project goes together really quick you guys um, it's just if you want to make multiples takes a little bit more time for sure I know I, I made two last night, and I'm definitely gonna make these for the trailer, but I wanna make a couple more for inside the house. Oops, and Lisa forgot to clip open that one. Now again, you do not have to do this step and open it up, but I feel like it's a lot less bulk for our next step. So that's why it's kind of my take on helping it with the next step. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to put right sides together, okay? So I'm gonna nestle that right inside there, just like that, so I've got my right sides facing. This is where my clips are gonna come in. So what I'm gonna do is I like to match up my seams. So I'm gonna match up right on that seam and I'm gonna give it a clip. And I'm gonna do all four of those, what I call the dart seams first. And just make sure those are all lined up nice. And then what I'll do is go ahead and just throw a clip in the corners. And it looks like I got a couple threads there I need to trim off. So get those trimmed. And then what we want to make sure we do is we're going to leave an opening and you only need the opening to be about two inches 
and I'll show you where we're gonna do that at because we're gonna wanna turn this right side out when we're all done. And what I like to do is I like to sew all the way around and then come just about an inch short of this corner and leave this part open. So for example, just leave this section right here open. It's enough to turn it. It does take a little bit of manipulation, but it definitely is enough to do it. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna start right about here, right about there. I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'm gonna stop right about here and I'm gonna backstitch. And I want to make sure I've got a good back stitch on either side of this seam because this is where we're going to um, pull the um, right side out. And we want to make sure that we don't tear on our seam at all. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how we do that. So I'm going to do about a quarter inch seam and I'm going to use my foot as my guide. And I'm going to go ahead and put my presser foot down, remove my clip. And I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to do a back stitch, remember, because I want to give this a good secure. And then what I do is I sew all the way up to that diagonal line. And then once my needle hits that diagonal line, I leave my presser foot or my needle down and I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to turn this. So each time I get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys can just watch as I come to a seam, sink, lift, and sew. have it all sewn now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clip those corners and so we've got our corners all clipped one more thing I want to do just to help with some of the bulk either if you have got pinking shears I'm not sure if you've used pinking shears before, but either pinking shears or I love my gingers that have got a blunt nose. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's not, I've got a pair that have got sharp, but this one's got a blunt nose. And what I like to do with that is just clip, don't clip through your seams, but just clip in these corners and it will help everything lay so nice when we go to turn it right side out. And then what we're gonna do is give it a good press and then we are going to give it a top stitch and we're gonna be done with this project. So I've got those nice and clipped. And then this just takes a little bit of time, you guys. Our opening is not that big, but just work it through and just keep poking through a little at a time and sometimes if I go grab a corner from the other side and push that through first, that really helps. So just push it through, push and pull, push and pull. And then for any of you that have seen Lisa's videos, yes, I'm gonna use my Clover Two Point Turner because I want to poke out all of my corners really nice. I've got my iron here all ready to go. I'm gonna take my clover two-point turner and with the pointy edge, I'm gonna be very careful because I don't wanna go through the corner at all, but I am just going to poke out each one of those corners. Then we're gonna give it a really good press and then I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna give it a top stitch. Now, whenever I do top stitches, I like to increase my um, thread width to about three and a half. I just think that with that thread width, it smooth, goes a lot smoother. The other thing you might want to do, depending on your sewing machine, if you have a walking foot, 
this is quite a bit of material to go through. And so a walking foot might also be something that you might want to use. Now, just by doing those clips, my corners or my where my darts are is laying really, really nice. I'm just gonna go around and give each one of those seams a good, good press. Now you guys will notice I, am, I do have steam on my iron. I like to do that because I just think I get a better um, press on it. And then where our opening was, I just like to make sure everything gets folded under. And then I'm gonna give it a press. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a clip on it. Cause I like to clip that opening so I know when I'm coming around to sew it that that's the one I got to pay really close attention to on the top stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and put two clips there. But look, you guys, we have not even done our top stitch yet, but we've already can see how cute our little bowl cozy is turning out. So all I have to do is give it a top stitch and it is going to be ready to go. So let's hop back over to the sewing machine. show you here, I am going to do this with my walking foot. So I went ahead and put my walking foot on my sewing machine just to show you how that works. So I'm going to use just the outside guide of my foot as the guide for my top stitch. I am going to increase my top stitch to three and a half and just show you there on my machine, I've increased it to three and a half. And then we are just going to do a top stitch. So when I do the top stitch, I always like to do just a little bit of a stitch, a little bit of a back stitch, and then go ahead and just very slowly go around. And you can come to those points again sink your needle, raise your foot, bring it around, and continue to do your top stitch. So we'll just go ahead and top stitch all the way around. Now this is where I'm coming to where my opening was. So I'm gonna be very careful here when I'm doing my top stitch, just to make sure that I grab those edges. And then we're just gonna continue on. And I will meet you back over at the sewing table when I have this all done. And there we have it. How cute is that? So all I'm gonna do is clip my threads I'm going to go take these in the house and put them in a bowl so you guys can see what they look like. And let me know what you think about this bowl cozy project. I just love how these all turned out. All just a little bit different. And I love that we can make them reversible. So how fun is that? Changing what it looks like. Thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And here it is. This is that blue one in my gray bowl and then the reverse of it in the white bowl. So these are great for these dinner size bowls. But if you want to learn how to make a larger one, make sure you check out my blog post and I'll tell you how you can alternate the sizing so that you can have a larger bowl. Thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday.